Okay, so I've got an O2 Sportster XL1200 Custom. Um, I put in a hammer 1275 kit, cams, heads, Magnaflow Riot exhaust, and I need a tack. So instead of getting the stock tack, I picked up a Dakota Digital MLX 3000. It says it's relatively plug and play. Um, that's not on true. It's got a plug on the back for uh, the speedometer, which will end up wiring down right into this triangle plug under the seat. So that's good. But you have to get power from here. So the red white needs to go to a, a fused constant power. To do that, there is none coming off the battery or off the bike. So I'm going to have to build a little fused terminal coming off the positive of the battery. That's not a problem. The red, I believe it's the red, is going to go into, this is the stock speedometer uh, harness. It's going to go into the orange-white. That is uh, the the keyed power. I checked it with my voltmeter. These three, red, white, and black, are the original speedometer wires, so they travel under the seat to right there. That's coming out. <clears throat> and obviously the trip switch. One of these blacks in position 8, which I want to say is that one there it says bk and then a negative sign in parentheses that i think is going to be my ground for the mlx so this black will get wired to that uh this red will get wired to here the red white will go under the seat to the fuse i'm going to put in there you can see the pile of fuses that's just from AutoZone. um 10 amp fuse block fuses, ring terminals, more ring terminals, and some more shrink tube, just to make it look a little better. Uh, and then this yellow wire is for the tack, so I'm running a Dyna 2KI, and that will come out of the Dyna harness. It's hard to see, but it's up there. Um, and I believe it's the blue wire. I'll check the wiring diagram on that, but it'll get wired straight into that wire. <clears throat> Excuse me, that wire, and we should have we should have uh, attack. All right, quick update. So we're mostly done. Um, I've got the power that'll be red going into orange white. That came out of a switch that's behind, I'm sorry, a Deutsch connector that's behind this plate. Um, that's the keyed accessory power. The white, this wire goes up into the speedometer, the DD unit. The white goes into uh, white green that goes into the TCM the turn signal control module uh, That wire was also taken out of that same I want to say it's like a 8 or 12 pin Deutsch in the back behind this plate uh, These two turn signal Deutsches are going to get reconnected in a second This will tuck in nicely Right there you can see the white and the green uh, those are going down into the harness not quite done yet, but uh, this one is the yellow going to my tack, which I was wrong earlier. It's the green wire into the 2000i, 2ki. So those will get get wired there, spliced together there. This is the white red constant fused. That's going to go back and connect to the fuse block that way, and this will go on the battery terminal. That end will get spliced on to that red-white. And then this is the three speedo wire that I will clean up and tuck back here uh, up under the seat. Okay, I got it installed. Um, wasn't terrible. That's as it, as it sits. Uh, got the miles per hour set, got the odometer set. I used my phone Bluetooth to it to set the odometer, which is super handy. Um, final thoughts, I guess. I've ridden with it for a couple miles. I like it quite a bit as far as the output. Um, see, that's the speedo cable. That's the power to it. I'm not super happy with how I ran that. It's hard to see, but speedo and the power's right there. Runs into the seat. 
uh, right to the battery. But my thoughts on it. Um, it is not plug and play on an O2 at all. Um, I don't have a problem with cutting and splicing wires, but the way it's presented, I guess, it sounds more like it's going to be unplug your stock speedo, plug in this one, and you're off and rolling in 10 minutes. That's not the case. Uh, it's more, it's a lot more work than that, uh, but it's not a problem if you if you expect that. Had I read the instructions, even the, the manuals online, the install manual before I bought it, that wouldn't have been a problem. I still would have bought it. But, um, like I said, expecting to be able to plug and play last night, and it took me an additional three hours today, um, that's probably my fault, ultimately, for not reading before I purchased, but no big deal there. Uh, the thing I don't like is setting the speedometer. So I went to a local cemetery that's rather large, uh, so I could try to set the speedo using my phone's GPS, following the instructions. Um, and it sounds pretty simple. You just hold a speed or hit a speed and then use the the button under the back of the speedometer to go, to go down. You select to go up or down. Um, the trouble is holding a speed long enough isn't very easy to be able to actually move up or down uh, with that button. So what I ended up doing was stopping that, uh, pulling over, downloading a like a Map My Run app, and just using the odometer on that and using Auto Set on the speedometer on the D and D unit. So it automatically went. Uh, I rode for a mile, and when I stopped, it calibrated itself, and it seems to be pretty accurate. Uh, I need to check it a little bit better, but I think it's pretty good. Um, and I'll have a better idea when I get a little more time on it, you know, how it feels relative to traffic and everything. Setting the odometer is super easy. Uh, one thing I wish I'd have done is written down the mileage from my stock speedometer. Luckily I know what mileage I was at when I, when I installed the new top end and was able to and know exactly what I rode, which routes I rode, so I was able to do the math on it, come up with the with the value on the screen. Um, but putting it in, it's silly. It's so easy. You just open the app on your phone and um, and put in the values you want, and it Bluetooths it right to it, and that's that. Uh, I like that you can switch between just hitting the back button. Uh, there's a number of, you know, of whatever you want to see, high miles an hour, your zero to sixty time, quarter mile time. Don't believe those. Uh, I think that was just idling. Um, I haven't set the clock yet, and then all those functions are available on the top line as well. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I'd buy it again uh, if I had another bike again for a 2002 Sportster 1200 Custom. Um, I can't complain. Well, one thing I did, what took me so long was getting this installed is the way I routed the wires. Uh, I didn't want these to be exposed very much, so I tried to route them, you know, in shrink tube as much as possible and uh, give them enough slack that they weren't going to be pulled tight. Uh, so it took me some time just to get it routed fairly cleanly. Um, other than that, I think total install time was like four hours, and that was a good amount of time last night figuring out that I had to wire in my own fuse so really if you know that going ahead of time probably three and a half hours um, start to finish including setting the speedometer